You're listening to the Chat City interviews on 103.2 Preston FM. Okay, and that's where you are, Chat City 103.2 Preston FM. And right now, it's nice to welcome my next guest into the studio. And uh, it's uh, PC uh, Eddie. Ah, dear me, live radio this morning. And I know this guy, and his name suddenly disappeared out of my head. So uh, I can tell you it's one of those mornings. It's Eddie Baldwin. So good morning, Eddie. Good morning, Huey. How are you? Uh, good. As you can see, it's a little stressful this morning here at Chat City, but we're getting through it. It's nice to meet you. And you're in the studio to tell us about a run that's taken place or is about to take place. Is it going to be taking place? No, it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's the run to remember that we're talking about. Um, basically, it's a series of runs that uh, we started on the 1st of December last year. Uh, and we hope to finish, or we will finish, the final day of the runs is the 4th of April. It's 125 days from start to finish. Uh, the idea behind it being that within that period of time that uh, all the people taking part have to run 250 miles. Um, so obviously, simple maths, that's an average of two miles per day. And tell us the reason for the run, because there is a particular reason for this event. Yeah, the, the run's been held in memory of the, uh, of the PCs, uh, Nicola Hughes and, uh, and Fiona Bone, who were, were murdered in uh, Greater Manchester a couple of years ago now. Um, the Nicola Hughes, Nicola Hughes's family uh, are the people behind the, uh, the run. They're, they're the ones who were organising it. Um, and it's sort of been run to raise money for her charity fund that they set up in her name. And as anything like this, t- I mean, is there an annual event? Because it is for people who have served within the police force. And I, I must admit, as um, you know, you being a serving officer, when anything happens, it must it must be something that hits morale throughout the country. Because I think this is a national event, is it? Yeah, um, there's, there's people throughout the, the police forces, uh, 43 police forces taking part in it. Um, within Lancashire, we've got just over 65 people doing the run. Uh, and nationally, there's somewhere in the regions of about 700, uh, 1,780 people involved in it. Um, they're all police staff, police officers. Um, within Lancashire, we've got uh, a mix of both uh, and some, re- uh, some sort of relatives as well who are involved in it. And is it an annual event? For- it's, n- it's not an annual event uh, per se. Um, this is the first time this has ever been run. Uh, I'm not sure if there'll be events in the future for, from this one. Um, I'm, I can't imagine that we'll be doing the 125-day challenge again. No. Um, whether somebody will come up with a, a, a new idea for, for next year, uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, it has brought a lot of people together doing this run this year. Um, and to be fair, it would be quite nice to, to carry on that legacy and be able to do something else again in the future. And I would imagine that when people found out what it was all about, I would imagine you didn't have any problem getting people to sign up to do the run, and I would imagine that was the situation across the country. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I was one of the, the first in Lancashire to sign up for it. It was quite a personal thing for me, having worked on the uh, the Dale Cregan trial early, uh, earlier last year, uh, whilst it was being held at Preston Crown Court. Um, I volunteered to coordinate on behalf of Lancashire Constabulary at that point in time because there was only about eight of us involved in it at, the, at that point and the, sort of the idea was that 10 police officers from each force would be involved. Um, all of a sudden we ended up with 60 odd people which was a, a considerably more difficult number to coordinate. So, uh, so yeah, lots of people involved in it and lots of people uh, very, very willing to get involved and, and, and carry it on. Yeah. And as you say, uh, the trial of Dale Cregan was held here in Preston and lots of other high-profile cases throughout the year. How long have you been with the force, Eddie? Uh, I've been with them for 18 years now. And, I, I mean, is it, is it something that is consciously with you a lot of the time, are the dangers? Because, I mean, you go out there and you just never know what you're going to be dealing with, do you, day in, day out? You don't, know. Um we don't really give that much consideration, to be fair. When we're, when we're out there, it's, we're doing the job that we joined to do. Um, it's, it's days like the day uh, that uh, Nicola and Fiona were killed that bring it home to you just what we are doing and what dangers we do face. We, we put ourselves in that way. Um, police officers are getting injured nationally every single day of the, uh, of the week. So one of the things that the, the foundation gives money to is obviously the Benevolent Fund uh, and um, all the charities involved in looking after the care of, uh, care of victims. So that's quite, gr- quite good for us. Um, obviously, the victims aren't just police officers, the, the, but we, do, we, we are victims ourselves as well from mm. time to time. So. I was actually going to ask about that. So the charity actually does support victims. Are, are they, you mean, victims of crime? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it, one of the one of the three charities that they give to is the actual uh, is is actually victims uh, victim care. So that that money will go towards the victims of crime. And I believe two uh, on this challenge actually um, were departing for the North Pole, where they were going to be doing a marathon. Would you believe round the up in the North Pole? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Bryn and Rob, um, Nicholas father and brother um, I think they're using this as part of their training for it to be fair um, the, the week after we finish the uh, the final run on the 4th of April they, they're off to the North Pole and they're going to do the uh, the North Pole Marathon which sounds pretty impressive I have to say I don't think I could do it myself I was going to say something that untempted you uh, no but <laughs> up until the starting of this challenge I, I, I hated running absolutely is hated that right it. yeah um, I suffer quite badly ah. from shin splints, so it was something that I don't enjoy doing at all. Um, put me on a bike, I'm quite happy all day long, I'll cycle all day long. But running is not something that I do. Uh, I've, I've gone from hating running to actually hating not running now. Uh, there's been a few days where I've not been able to run for illnesses and injury, and you know, driving around nowadays, you see lots of people out running. And if I've had a day where I've not been able to run, and I've been out and I've seen other people running, it really does tug on the heartstrings, and you, you want to get out there and start running. Yes, I know the feeling. I, I, I don't know why. I just assumed that you had always been a runner for some, some reason. No, 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 no. It's uh, not, a, not a particularly favourite hobby of mine at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So, so the end of this challenge then is when? It's the 4th of April. Um, we're getting together on the 4th of April. There's going to be a, a, a regional run held in Manchester. The venue's not been completely confirmed it, yet. Will that be, you mean the end of the event is going to be with a run in Manchester for everybody yes. who's been taking part across Lancashire? Yeah, everybody's obviously invited who's been taking part um, for, for nationally. It's not just from within Lancashire. Um, and obviously, I mean, a lot of people won't be able to make it because we all work shifts and, and this, that and the other. So there will be people who can't come for that. But there will be an awful lot of people attending Manchester on that day. Uh, and, and we're going to do the I mean, two miles. It has hit the press. I mean, it's been taken up by the press across the country, hasn't it? There's been some good coverage of... Uh, so again, it, it, it shows you that what happened to the two police officers because I know sometimes um, media and public reaction to the police is not always that good. But in this case, the cause has certainly been taken up by, by the media across the country. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, as an organisation, we're in receipt of negative press probably on a daily basis. So it is good for us to get some positive press. And, and unfortunately, uh, we shouldn't have to have the tragedy that we've had involved to get the positive press. But, you know, so be it. If that's, if that's the case, then uh, there's not a lot I can do about that as an individual. Uh, but yes, nationally there has been a great deal of positive press about it. Um, last week, not last weekend, sorry, the weekend before we had a, a regional run where a number of us gathered together from uh, Cheshire, GMP, Merseyside, Lancashire, uh, down at Warrington. And we all did, uh, I'm sorry, the National Crime Agency were there as well. Um, and we did a, a two-mile run around Birchwood Park there. So, and that was, that was publicised and uh, put on the television. We all did it in fancy dress, which was rather amusing. Right. <laughs> and I, I know you've always got... a remain professional you've got to stay in the role of the police officer particularly as you said when you were here in Preston and it was uh, Dale Cregan's trial now for listeners who don't uh, remember maybe Dale Cregan was the person who was found guilty that's right isn't it of the murder of these two police officers how difficult though is it because you do have to remain professional you're a police officer you were here in Preston during that period of the trial of Dale Cregan. How, how difficult is it to contain those emotions? Um, it, it is very difficult, uh, but it's something that we, we do on a daily basis, so we're, we're used to doing that. Um, the important thing for us is to remain professional. We're not doing our job properly if we don't remain professional. We don't allow things like that to, to affect the way that we deal with individuals. Um, for me, one of the one of the things that I got from from policing that trial was the fact that the the, the actual families involved, the victims' families involved, were an absolute inspiration. The way that they dealt with the tragedy was was you know fantastic to see. Um, and from that, you, you can just gather strength from that, can't you? And, and, and just see, as I say, the inspirational. That's all. That's the only word you can really use to describe the people involved in it. Mm. And and the police benevolent fund itself. I mean, 
in the northwest uh, can members of the public also give into that or is it purely an internal benevolent fund um, to be honest I'm not not 100% sure right um, uh, I imagine that people can obviously they can donate to this uh, this charity yes I was going to ask more about that how to do um, that that's a way of being able to donate to that uh, that charity but the the benevolent fund itself does do some great work it's got a number of rehabilitation uh, facilities for police officers when they're injured uh, and that's just not not just physically but mentally um, that that's operated for police forces throughout the country, um, two or three places in the north of England and Scotland where we can go and uh, and receive treatment for various ailments that uh, we picked up in the line of duty. Mm. And if people do want to uh, give, where's the best place to go? Uh, well, they can uh, they can have a look on the website, which is the uh, PC Nicola Hughes Memorial Fund uh, Run to Remember website. Uh, there's details of how they can donate on that site. Or if they want to email me on uh, eddie.baldwin at lancashire.pnn.police.uk, um, I can get back in touch with them and, uh, and we can discuss how we can uh, make some donations that way. Okay. Eddie, can I thank you for coming in this morning? And uh, I will invite you back, you know, when you're doing the North Pole Marathon, let me know, and I'll get you back <laughs> into the studio to talk to you about it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the total distance is nine and a half marathons, so uh, I don't see why one might not be uh, too tricky in a couple of years from now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be lovely to meet then. Eddie, thanks for coming in this morning. Thanks thank very you. much, Shiri. Thanks a lot. If you've got news, views or events you'd like to share with us and the Chat City team, why not give us an email? chatcity at preston.fm